to be their healer. They've gotten this far, but will they be able to make it through one of the most aggressive teams we've seen in the AWC making a movie? Yeah, making a movie, they're going to have to make a play very early on. If Temple Storm can outlast that aggression, then they ultimately will win on mana more than likely. So making a movie, like I said, they have to get aggressive. They have to look for these setups. Marl looking to get aggressive very early on, popping the Ice Form. Shadow Blade's going to be used as well. They're looking to take down Alec, but a nice Temporal Shield will deflect most of his damage. Yep, good Temporal Shield. And then obviously Nixie still trading out the trick. And Alec gets busted down. He's as cold as ice. He gets caught up. Master Spell, Smoke Bomb. They're going for the all-in here, but no. No crowd control on Nixie. Ironbuck should deflect the rest of the damage, but Alex still in trouble. That was a huge arsenal of defensive core and from Tempo. Yeah, now Alec wants to get aggressive, trading out the ice form, empowering his damage quite a bit with the Cyclone over on Acro. Ratify playing defensive. He uses the Rapture to keep his team stable and alive to deflect these cooldowns coming in from Temple Storm. It's a nice play. Making a movie, or yeah, they just need to buy their time, wait for their next setup so they can try to burst down Alec and force out that second ice block. Yeah, and you can see Nixie is actually running with the Moonkin affinities, which of course immunes him to those polymorphs whilst he's in the Moonkin form. He can still dispel and regrowth, and there's actually a build you can play with the Honor Talent Nourish, where each one of your regrowths will apply a hot. But we see the kidney shot coming over onto Nixie right now. They need to land the Ring of Frost. It's the only crowd control that actually works on that Moonkin form. They're able to land it. Alec, once again, though, using the Temporal Shield, blinking behind the pillar, should be able to kite away, but Ratapai does have the follow-up fear. Yeah, there's a follow-up fear. Jamie doesn't look like he has a Tremor available. I think Ratapai got that out of the way earlier on, so that was nicely done. Alec still getting bursted down, but the Iron Bark should be able to deflect. Nice cross crowd control coming in from making a movie. Ratify is doing a good job with this mana. Dark Archangel is going to be available for the next setup. Nixie still no trinket available. He gets interrupted. Iron Bark's going to fade. Alex in a world of pain very, very shortly, but Marl's getting counter pressure. This mage is forced into a sort of a defensive position right now. Both mages just attacking each other. Ultimately, Marl is the one that is forced into his first ice block. Yeah, and I mean, the Rogue Mage Priest, we already saw uh, when it was the side of Method Black, they really struggled against this composition from Tempo Storm, and once again, Maro forced down. You can see Radapai is doing a fantastic job with his mana pool, though, which is definitely a big difference between the game with Method Black. Getting caught up in the crowd control right now, Maro having to kite away. So we see the counter kidney shot coming out onto Nixie once again in that moon can form, but the Ring of Frost lands. Alec in trouble. Yeah, Alex a lot of trouble. Blinks behind the pillar with the temporal shield, deflecting a lot of this incoming damage. Acro's looking for a sap onto Nixie, gets it out of the Ring of Frost. Alec now all alone by himself. Uh, is he going to be able to hold on just a little bit longer? Nixie connects the Iron Bark once again, and once he gets out of that crowd control, he gets the Iron Bark up. I don't think Alex is going to die, so Temple Storm has been doing a good job. Alec realizing when he has to play defensive, he's blinking on the line of sight, activating the Temporal Shield, and so those plays that are keeping him alive. Yeah, I think Alec has been playing this game fantastically from a defensive point of view. He's running that Relentless Talent. I would be curious to see if he's actually playing the single blink to blink out of stuns. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think I might have seen it. Uh, he's got the Temporal Shield as well, so he's just trading that out every time they get the crowd control, and of course, Jamie provides fantastic utility on that Enhancement Shaman. He's got the Tremor Totem, he's got the off heels. They're trying to swap over to him, though, since he did Trinket in that last exchange. Yeah, now they're turning their attention over onto Jamie. Nixie has to trade out his Trinket on the Polymorph. Luckily for him, Akra's already used the blind, so that might not exactly line up perfectly a little bit later on in the game, and that could be an opportunity for making a movie to score a kill. Marl having to play a little defensive as Jamie's all over him, but he's been doing such a good job kiting him, keeping him in the Polymorph, really just minimizing the damage he's taking while Ratify's caught into these Cyclones. Yeah, and Alex, since he's playing that blink instead of the normal Shimmer, they've actually decided that he's not an easy kill target for the Subtlety Rogue, of course, very reliant on those stuns. Maro now dropping lower and lower. Radapai's mana is dropping low. Tempo Storm, the three-man roster without a healer, with Nixie ulting on that healer, are looking fantastic in the first game on the Grand Arena, but we see a big swap over onto Jamie. Uh-oh, uh -oh, Smoke Bomb gets dropped. Jamie has to get out of it. Nice Iron Bark, going to be used by Nixie on that Smoke Bomb. That's the only reason why Jamie's alive. Nixie been playing excellently in this matchup so far. Now Morrow could be in some trouble. Ratapai caught into the polymorph. Morrow forced into a very defensive position. Ratapai can't connect. Nice snares coming in from Alec. Morrow gets bursted down, forced into the second ice block, and he's not going to have another one for another three minutes. Yeah, no ice blocks, of course. Relentless on Ratapai, who's also struggling on mana, but Tempo Storm need to be careful. This next setup could be the kill. No Astral Shift, no Iron Bark for Nixie. Jamie will be the kill target, but he does have his Trinket and the Grounding Totem. It's all down to him to stop this next crowd control. Full CS over onto Nixie. That's out the way now, so he'll be able to free cast heals in that Moonkid form if they can stop this Ring of Frost. Yeah, there's the full Ring of Frost. Ebonbolt gonna connect onto Jamie. He's in a world of pain right now. He trinkets out, throwing heals on himself. 
trying to stay alive the best he can. The Ray of Frost being channeled out by Morrow. Nixie has the Iron Bark, not even going to throw it out. Jamie stabilizes. He's going to be fine. This is looking good for Tempo Storm. This Moonkin affinity on Nixie is paying dividends for the team. It means he can't get the random shapes. They can't get the follow-up shapes once they land that Ring of Frost. And it's just helping Tempo Storm aid themselves to victory. We see a full blind here, but I'm not really sure what they can do with it. They're using the orb. They're trying to get another go onto Jamie here. Trinkets up momentarily for Nixie. Will he get it in time? He might have to trinket out DR here, but Jamie dies. That is the setup I was talking about. Nixie, he, he waited and he sat the blind into a kidney and then ended up trinketing the follow-up polymorph. And that 10-second window they took advantage of and ended up closing out the game. RMP, if the mage has enough damage to kill on its own, we'll just bring an outlaw rogue. That's even better. Pumpkin spice lattes and outlaw rogues. What a season to be alive in. But making a movie going to be leading by one. Will they be able to get themselves on match point? Yeah, and I think it is important to note once again that this is the three-man version of Tempo Storm. They have Botar, a two-time BlizzCon champion, sitting in the ranks waiting for that next cup. So definitely going to see a lot more of them. But even as three, they're looking great. Nixie playing that healer role. And I mean, he's learned his lesson, right? Like the full blind comes out from Acro, immediately going to trinket out of that one so that he does have that cooldown rotating appropriately. Yeah, I think it's smart. Jamie's still in a little bit of trouble, not using the Astral Shift, but and Nixie finally going to be out of crowd control. Should get the heels rolling on Jamie. He should be stable. And now Temple Storm, they want to get aggressive, but the Polymorph on Alec and the nice CS on Anixie. Marl's doing an excellent job controlling the enemy team during this downtime. They just need to stall it out till they get the DRs up to put Nixie in more crowd control. They can do another burst attempt onto Jamie. I mean, one of the things you actually need to be really aware of when you play Mage into this Moonkin Affinity Rest Druid is actually your CS is one of your best ways of stopping heals. So I think using that too freely can be a mistake on the side of Mara since Nixie can now basically free cast Cyclone as much as he wants, but that smoke bomb landing a full sap on Nixie. A beautiful outplay coming in from Acro Lols there, able to land that. Not too much doing though, as Jamie's just going to trinket out, spam out some heals, stop the follow up crowd control. Well, they've gotten the trinket from Nixie, they've gotten trinket from Jamie, they've got Astral Shift, so they've basically gotten every single defensive Temple Storm has available. Alex is going to have to do an excellent job playing defense. There's the Tremor Totem as well, so Nixie is open to or susceptible to a lot of crowd control coming up here very, very shortly. If you look, making a movie, they still have a lot of offensives available. If they can just line those up with a nice crowd control on Nixie, they can definitely close out this game. Yeah, there's definitely going to be looking at that Dark Archangel coming up in about 15 seconds for Radapai. Of course, the Ice Form as well for Maro, that big cooldown that Zika was talking about pre-game. And now the Polymorph's coming in. They're trying to land some stuff, but Nixie just kiting away. We're waiting for that kidney shot from Acro. That's normally the initiation on the crowd control. You can see he's sitting there. He's waiting for it. Here we go. Kidney shot, cheap shot on Jamie. They're looking for the kill then. Yeah, Maru lands the full ring of frost. Jamie's in a lot of trouble. No defense is available. There's the Dark Archangel. All three members looking to take Jamie down, but his healing is just crazy. <laughs> he manages to top himself off, and, uh, despite a, basically a perfect setup coming in from making a movie. And now Jamie wants to get aggressive on Amaro once again. He still has both his ice blocks. Jamie doesn't have the ascendance for another two minutes, but Acro, he's just playing it patient. Gets the full sap on Alec in this matchup and just stalling out time until DRs are up. Yep, the sap there coming out over onto Alec, just slowing down the game a little bit. Radapai down to about 40% mana, so that's already something that making a movie needs to be very aware of. Of course, Nixie's trinket has rotated back for the blind on Acrolols. That can be a free exchange if making a movie want to make it. But Jamie, much more importantly, has his trinket, has his astral shift. Tempo Storm have the, cool, the tools they need to survive, and now they're the team that's trying to get offensive over on tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow he's doing a good job polymorphing up Alec. There's the full blind on Nixie. Nixie, are you going to trinket? Are you going to make the same the mistake trinket. once again? He manages to sit it into a full sap. If he has to trinket late, that's going to be another opening for making a movie, but he sits the entire blind and the sap. Jamie manages to survive. DR Fear coming in. Jamie not going to be wasting the Tremor. I think that was a bait. Ratapai was trying to get that precious Tremor totem out of the way, but Jamie realizing, hey, that's a one-quarter DR Fear on Nixie. There's no reason to use it at this moment, especially when making a movie really didn't have any pressure rolling. Yeah, so if you sit the blind, I think the only way that that's an acceptable choice is if you don't have to trinket anything in the setup. So Nixie actually got away with that play since Jamie also didn't have to trade out his trinket. But they have the Astral Shift down now, of course. A lot of offensive core available. You see Shadow Blades for Acro Lols. Also, that Ice Form will be up in about 20 seconds. So definitely some huge offensive core on the side of making a movie. But Tempo Storm have answers. And Radapai is running low on mana, down to about 20%. He's going to run out of healing very shortly in this game, as Dampling will surely stack in the next couple of minutes. And making a movie, 
they're really struggling on this slightly larger map to get their setups going. Yeah, Temple Storm's looking bulletproof. Nice interrupt on Nixie. Now it looks like they're going to be turning their attention. They wanted onto... Nixie there. Uh, Nixie looks like he's the target of choice for now. He's in bear form with Barskin. Should be able to survive. That's the Dark Archangel coming in from Ratapai. The last little bit of mana, and really Nixie not using too much. Still has the trinket available. Jamie did use his trinket in that exchange, trying to keep Nixie alive, but I think that was a perfectly fair exchange. Making a movie, they're really running out of time. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of desperation time when they go for the Restoration Druid. It is an advantage of the Moonkin uh, aura coming out of Nixie that he doesn't have the Guardians, he doesn't have the Frenzy Regeneration, or the 6% damage reduction that uh, the Guardian of Frenzy brings you. But on the flip side, he has his Trinket because he saved it on the blind, so he's definitely not going to be an easy kill for making a movie who are very short on time in Game 2 here on Tiger's Peak. Mara just getting tunneled down, really struggling since James is doing such a great job of shutting him down. He's going to be forced into that ice block. Now he needs to get offensive over onto Nixie. Yeah, it looks like they uh, want to make a swap over on Nixie. He trinkets out immediately, realizing he could go down, so doesn't want to mess around. Looks like Jamie uses his ascendance. Morrow could be in some trouble in the situation. Ratapai into the polymorph. There's a full blind on Nixie, though. Doesn't have a trinket available. Jamie needs to keep himself alive, doing so quite easily. Morrow looking for the Ebon Bolt onto Jamie, but he easily deflects that, taking basically no damage in that exchange. And now Morrow's on the run. I like the creative play coming out of making a movie, but they simply didn't have enough damage. We saw the ascendance from Jamie just easily able to outheal anything that making a movie could produce, but they have forced the trinket on Nixie. There's two openings here, potentially Jamie without that astral shift or Nixie without the trinket. I'd love to see them keep swapping over to him, but they just don't have enough time. Radapai has absolutely nothing left in the tank. He's desperately spamming out smites to get the heals, but it's just not happening. Now the full polymorph coming in. Mara's in a lot of trouble, and Tempo Storm are just a few seconds away from winning this game. Yep, they are. We've seen making a movie come in with desperation plays and close out the game when it looks like they are going to lose. I expect them to hold on for dear life. Here's a big swap on to Nixie. Jamie has to keep him alive with the grounding totem. Drops it. Not a lot of damage uh, coming in from making a movie in this particular setup. Nixie manages to survive. That was nicely done by Jamie. Alec getting bursted down just a little bit, but look at Ratapai. No mana at all. Manages to death the sheep coming in from Alec, removing that into the resheep. Marl in a little trouble now. Still has one ice block available, and Ratapai somehow always keeps his team alive when he basically has no mana left. Throws up the paint suppression to reduce the incoming damage. And honestly, making a movie, they still have a chance, but it's not looking good. Yeah, they're swapping back over onto Alec now, but he's still playing that blink talent, able to blink out of all these stuns. A good temporal shield will keep him stable behind the pillar. And Nixie's on the stun DR, so they don't have the opportunity to swap to him. Jamie will surely tremor this fear. He actually preemptively uses the tremor before the fear. They kill it off. Now they have the full fear over onto Nixie. This could be an ice block from Alec. Beautiful play coming out of making a movie who do not have any mana still. Maro taking so much damage. Full Cyclone over onto Ratapai, looking for that second ice block, and they do force it there. Yeah, managed to find it. No ice block going to be available for four minutes. Acro getting swapped to now, forcing the evasion. Ratapai has the Dark Archangel. Is there any openings? I mean, Jamie, he has a trinket. Nixie has a trinket. Ironbark up in 15 seconds for Temple Storm. This is looking so good for them to tie up this series. They just need to not throw it away. Morrow getting interrupted. You see Jamie all over him in this situation, but nice triple CC coming in, making a movie, looking to make a play here, but unfortunately gets denied by a nice counterspell coming in from Alec, and now Alex wants to get aggressive, looking for the blink polymorph but it doesn't look like he manages to find it just yet. Yep, Nixie actually trinkets out of the blind there, so maybe one last opening for them, but we're down to 16% dampening. Mara has no ice blocks, Radapai has no mana. The next crowd control could easily be the game. They might just kill with damage, honestly, at this point. Jamie sitting in the polymorph, gonna be looking to reconnect over onto Mara, his kill target. The Frostmage slow is still keeping Mara in the game, though. Jamie's struggling a little bit here, but Radapai, they're so defensively positioned, it's gonna be so hard for Mara to even get a swap over onto Nixie if they could set it up. And I mean, Tempo Storm, I, I can't believe they haven't even secured this game yet. They're so close to winning it. Well, making a movie is really good at stalling out the game when they have no mana. Morrow's great at kiting, keeping up the snares, throwing out the polymorphs, but Jamie with the ascendance now, the range damage, that should close out the game. I don't think Ratapai has the healing <laughs> <laughs> to keep him alive in that situation, but nice attempts by making a movie. Temple Storm, they just look bulletproof when they pull it off correctly. And the thing is, is when they do pull it off, you start to say to yourself, Tempo Storm could just be able in this... Senpai here on the Druid. <laughs> Rada Senpai indeed going to lock it up on the Restoration Druid. And I mean, that kind of speaks to the fact that making a movie didn't feel confident in their second game, Ben. Well, it's not fun to just 
you know, wait until your priest runs out of mana. So I think Ratapon and the Druid, I think it's an excellent adaptation. They saw exactly how Method Black uh, won against Temple Storm, so, um, or at least did a pretty good job with this composition, at least. So we'll have to see how they can pull it off. Uh, the rest of Druid's going to bring a lot more crowd control with the Cyclones. The mana is going to be a little bit more stable. And with the Hots, it's going to allow Morrow and Acro's HP to become a little bit more stable as well. And Jamie's going to have more of a difficult time purging off those key buffs like the Ice Barrier. Yep, so this is going to be the one, f f the first, I guess, full test of Radapai on the Druid as Nixie tried to turn the hype and they not estimating his opponent too highly at that first one, but Radapai definitely gets the best of that first exchange, landing the Mighty Bash into the Ring of Frost, and this is dangerous for Alec already as we see the Cyclone coming out. Good crowd control from making a movie, looking strong. Damage isn't quite there. We see actually Acro's playing the DFA, but unfortunately Cyclone, good extra mobility cooldown coming out of the rogue there. Yeah, Acro, you can see he's pulling back. He's looking for the re-stealth, manages to find it, so it gets out of combat. That's going to allow him to go into stealth, get the cheap shots and garrotes that are only available to him when he is in that stealth. Manages to find the cheap shot on Nixie. Garrote onto Alec, and this is a lot of pressure here for making a movie. Alec's getting bursted down a little bit with that Comet Storm. Could be the first ice block. Manages to blink out of it, though, with a nice counter spell. Going to survive. There's a bash on Ratapai as they make a swap onto him in Moonkin form. Do they have the damage to take him down? He activates the Bark Skin. Should be able to survive. But maybe Temple Storm trying to exploit the fact that Ratapai is in the most experienced Resto Druid. But I don't know. So far, he's playing it quite well. Yeah, he's playing it quite well. But at the same time, they do lose some of that offense with the Discipline Priest. So they're passively going to find it harder to kill Tempo Storm, who are already looking quite tanky in the matchup. They lose the Dark Archangel. They lose the additional damage from the Discipline Priest. So we're definitely, we're definitely expecting this game to go a little bit longer. We see good damage now onto Acrolol. The purges on those hots from Jamie also going to make Radapai's life that bit harder. Yeah, Acro still getting low, Whoa. though. Doesn't have anything available. Radapai flailing to keep him alive as he barely hangs on. There's a Tranquility coming defensive in from Radapai with a defensive blind onto Jamie that will keep Acro alive. <laughs> what a scary moment for making a movie. Yeah, this is not <laughs> looking like the most confident start from making a movie. Even though they are living, they're really struggling to get stuff going offensively, and they need to at some point. We see Nixie caught up in the bash right now. They'll be looking for the Cyclone out of that since he did preemptively shift into bear form, making him immune to polymorphs coming out of Maro. Now we see a DR kidney shot as they try to swap over to him, but really nothing's going to happen from that. They force out the Iron Bark, I guess, but honestly, no Bark Skin. Nixie should just be able to walk away from this. They're trying to tunnel him down. That Moonkin form makes it slightly harder for him to survive, but his team's free casting right now. Making a move, you need to be careful. Yeah, Evan Bolt coming in from Maro. Nixie's going to take quite a bit of burst here. Jamie here to finally help him out with some heals, putting some pressure on the Acro. Still no evasion, no Cloak of Shadows, no Vanish, no nothing. So the only line of defense making a movie really he has is that iron bar from Ratapai. Once they can force that out, Acro could be very vulnerable as a target later on. Acro forced into a defensive position. He can't afford to chase uh, Nixie behind the pillar. So Jamie coming back, keeping Acro very defensive. I think it was the right move. Yeah, I mean, it's, it seems to be going okay for them. Look at the mana bars, though, making movie definitely a little bit behind Radapai at about 50% mana, but obviously much better than the Discipline Priest. That's one of the advantages of bringing this Restoration Druid to the field. We get good Cyclones coming out here as well, as we see the triple crowd control. Actually, Trinket forced here over onto Nixie. I think Maro popping all his offensives there was enough to scare him. He's still in trouble as he has to use the Bash defensively, the Iron Bark. This is the problem with the Moon can form. He doesn't have that Frenzy Regeneration, gets behind the pillar, should be able to stabilize here, but Trinket forced outside the blind will definitely cause a few openings. I mean, honestly, they might just keep going for Nixie on this Druid. Yeah, Alec also traded out an ice block there. So in that exchange, they got a free ice block from Alec. He was he was worried about Nixie. He ice blocked out of the crowd control so he could land a counter spell, try to keep his team alive with some polymorphs. But that's a free cooldown. Making Movie was able to pull out. They could take advantage on that later on. They can get the second ice block of Alec, and they have a huge window of opportunity to take down Temple Storm. Uh, in terms of mana, both Druids relatively even. Another kidney shot now committed onto Nixie. Does Morrow have any damage? It looks like he does. A lot of burst onto Nixie right now. Jamie getting CC'd up. Ratify doing a good job with the CC. Cyclone onto Jamie. Bash onto Jamie. Cyclone onto Alec now. Ratify playing this quite expertly to keep his team aggressive. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job. You can see his inner Discipline Breeze being channeled into this Restoration Dread right now, but he needs to be careful. There's the full bash. Jamie now in a little bit of 
getting a good amount of pressure out over onto Radapai, who's also being tunneled down by that ray of frost from Alec, who's getting good polymorphs out right now. But Nixie doesn't have anything here. He preemptively ironbarks it, and the heals coming out from Jamie should stabilize him. That ironbark was a huge play from Nixie. He didn't have anything left, and even now, he's still taking insane damage here. Yeah, anytime he gets caught into the kidney shot, mages have an ability called Spell Steal, and when they're talented into Kleptomania, which they normally are against the Resto Druids, he can remove all of those heal over time effects. So Nixie gets caught into a stun, has no hots because of Kleptomania, and then he has to play catch up. So that's where Jamie on the Enhancement Shaman really is just so valuable to keep him alive. Yeah, we see another kidney shot coming over onto Nixie right now, who trades out the bark skin immediately. He's really struggling to shift out of these things. He needs to get the bear form on a few more of these stuns to reduce that incoming damage, but he's struggling. And now another bark skin down. His trinket is rotating, though. Of course, there's no blind to exploit that on making a movie right now, since they tried to use it to set up over onto Alec. They just need to keep doing these swaps, maybe try to find an opportunity. Radapai's mana is dropping slowly, down to about 30% right now. That is the win condition for Tempo. Yeah, Radapai uses this is Barkskin. There's these sentence coming in from Jamie. He's looking to turn his attention right now over onto Alec, or sorry, onto Acro, it looks like. Trying to keep the pressure up. Death from above going to be used over onto Alec. Uh, allowing Acro to get a little bit more uptime as mages can be very slippery with their blinks and snares. So I, I think that talent adaptation, not necessarily the worst decision. Smart by Acro. Both mages just exchanging damage in the middle of the map. Around 8% damping right now. Nixie's actually way behind on mana, so it might be wise for him to try to sneak off and get a drink uh, in this situation. Yeah, I think Nixie's actually, since they started swapping to him, he's been struggling. You can see he's actually sitting down for a drink right now behind the pillar, but a beautiful pet Nova coming out of Maro will catch him. And now Acro, once again, they're committing. They're doing the swap over onto Nixie. He does have the trinket and the bark skin. He's using the bark skin. He wants to hold onto that trinket as he's trying to kite away. We see the bash onto Acro trinketed. They're trying to stay offensive here. Maro gets counterspelled on Frost. So there shouldn't be a great opportunity to kill Nixie here, but they force that defensive core. And once again, Radapai having to exchange a lot of mana, but Nixie's just still staying in. He needs to be really careful here then. Yeah, he could have gotten away there, uh, opting to get really aggressive with the Moonkin form and the Cyclones. Luckily, he got the Iron Bark on himself before the Kidney Shot and the Bear form. That was very well done reading the situation, but he's still in so much trouble, and his man has been taxed so much with this strategy coming in from making a movie. He really doesn't have that much time left. Yep, he's going to get the Cyclone. So actually, a Cyclone onto Radapai once again getting aggressive. This is good cross crowd control coming out of Tempo Storm. The DR Polymorph is CS though on Alex. There's no follow up. They actually let Acrolog get a restealth there. Slight misplay on the side of Tempo Storm. Nixie, I'd love to see him just go behind the pillar here. Yes, he is the guy they're trying to swap to. You can see Acrolog's trying to step towards him, and Nixie's running away. He's going into the corner. He's looking for a drink here. This could be huge for the team. You saw his mana was almost taxed. He's drinking up to full mana right now. They even have to use the orb to stop him, which is a big offensive cooldown on the side of making a movie. And that's definitely going to put them a little bit further behind as Dampening starts to stack them. I think it was definitely worth and now Alex actually getting bursted down in the situation, but stopping Nixie's drink there uh, was basically something they had to do at all costs. I think it was a fair trade. Alex still getting bursted down, full blind on Nixie. He trinkets out. Temporal Shield's going to be used by Alec with the Iron Bark from Nixie. He should be able to survive. Now Temple Storm looking to get aggressive with a bash over on Eratopi. Nixie looking for the Cyclone with the Polymorph on Acro. Maro all by himself. 3v1 situation. Ratapai trinkets out. Dispels Acro, and now Maro gets a little bit of help from his team with that Iron Bark. And 20% dampening these Wrestle Druid Hots are going to become so much less effective. And both Druids are running out of time with their mana pool. We're definitely in the end game now. Both these healers out of mana. Nixie definitely feeling the most of it, though. Almost zero mana on him. Radapai still has a tiny, tiny bit of blue in the bank as he's pushing in for those Cyclones using the Moonkin form. Nixie doesn't have a trinket, though. This is dangerous. Full bark skin coming out. This is the offensive cooldowns from Maro. They're trying to go through it. Even if they don't get the kill on the stuns, they have the damage. Dampening also stacking will make it very hard for Nixie to top himself off as he's trying to kite away here as he might fall down so low on health. He gets Vortex back into the fight. He blinks no away, way. gets the bash. Nixie with the survival artist skills actually going to get out of this one. He might go for a drink here, then. Yeah, he has to at this point in the game, but uh, Acro and Maro, they need to be able to shut it down. Nixie, he's sitting down. He's out of combat. If he gets these drinks off, this is going to be so huge for Tempo Storm. Every second he's sitting down in stealth, his mana's going up higher and higher. Alex is trying to hold on and buy his druid as much oh. time as possible. He gets 60% of his mana back, and now things for Temple Storm are looking so good. Ratapai completely tapped on mana. Jamie and Alec looking to get aggressive. Ratapai looking to get out of combat himself.
go for a drink, but that's not going to happen. You can see Alec and Jamie all over it, and they're going to be able to shut that Ooh. down. Kidney shot now on to Nixie. Morrow getting bursted down. Ken making a movie, make the last final play on to Nixie. Uses the bark skin, has the iron bark. Might be able to get away, but this is so much damage coming in from making a movie. Bark skin, iron bark, both committed on to Nixie. He's trying to get away just by a little bit more time. Jamie coming to help him out with the heels. He's trying to kite the best he can. Vortex going to keep him in position for just a second longer. Does Morrow have the damage to close this out? Trinket just coming up for Nixie. Has to trinket out of the stun immediately. Vortex is going to be used on Acro. Polymorph's coming in, but the Shadow Step allows Acro to get back on target. Huge in Venom. The Bash, though, is the last thing keeping Nixie alive. And I think he's done it. I think he's managed to survive and weather the final storm coming in from making a movie. Yeah, he has weathered it there, but Nick, he's still being tunneled down. I'd love to see him just get away, like use the Sheeps onto Acro Lols so they can kite across the map once and for all, but he's still being unrelentingly trained here, caught up in the full stun. The heels need to come out from Jamie if he is to stay alive. I'm back on himself, but it's not going to be enough. 34% dampening. He's struggling so much. Now the sheep start coming in from, from uh, Alec to start peeling Acrolos off him. He should be able to free cast some heels here. Gets the Cyclone onto Radapai. They're looking to turn it around. No ice block for three seconds on Maro. Should be able to get to that cooldown if he needs to use it. Radapai used his trinket there, though. Nixie needs to cross the map now. I want to see him line of sighting Acro, make it hard for this rogue to reconnect. Yeah, no bark skin, no trinket, no iron bark. Nixie is very susceptible in this situation. The only thing that can keep him alive is Jamie with his off heels, with his grounding totem. But Nixie he activates the bark skin. This is the final moments. He doesn't have anything left. He's in bear form, luckily, but Maro pulls the trigger with the ice form. Additional damage. Combat Storm comes crashing down, and Nixie, I don't think you're going to survive this one. And ultimately, he doesn't making the movie goes up two to one in the series. It might not be over though. Acro uh -oh. still dropping uh -oh. low. The Sunday comes in. He's so low and they get the cross kill. This isn't over yet. Alex says he's not had enough. The temporal shield. They have to. This is very interesting actually. The healer isn't going to be as effective because of the 40% dampling and Jamie is also going to be doing a fair bit of healing on that enhancement. These mages duking it out with the ray of frost. The polymorphs coming in as the game starts to stabilize. But this 2v2 in this much dampling, I actually think Tempo of the Edge here. Yeah, Radapai, he managed to get the bash cyclone onto Jamie. So if he can stabilize his team, things are favorable. We are at 41% dampening, but that also means Jamie's not going to be able to throw out as many off heels onto Alec. Alec just has to survive the best he can. Marl looking for burst on him right now. But if he counterspells the polymorph, that means Jamie can basically free cast. Alex looking for some damage onto Maro. Ratify is going to be throwing out the iron bark, potentially looking for uh, maybe a resurrection here. I don't think that's going to really happen in a matchup like this. Ascendance can be used as well. Maro has both of his ice blocks. It's going to be key to allow Ratapai a little bit of breathing room in this matchup, but he might be forced into the first ice block and is. And this actually isn't looking too bad for Tempo Storm. I, I actually think this is a favorable match for Tempo Storm because Frost Mages struggle so much to kill in a like one damage situation. They, it's really not their forte. And Enhancement Shamans, we know how much hybrid healing they can put out. Radapai is already struggling with the 45% dampening. Like you say, though, Maro does have both his ice blocks traded out one, still has the other one. Radapai is completely out of mana, though. If Jamie can just keep himself alive here, get a reconnection over onto Maro, this is how they're going to be winning this game. Alec doesn't even need to push for crowd control. He just needs to focus on damage in this situation. Yeah, I think Morrow really just needs to make sure he's pressuring Jamie the best he can, but it can be very difficult. Enhancement Shamans do a lot of damage. The healing from Radapai is not going to be that strong. This could be the second Ice Block, and it <laughs> is. Is Temple Storm going to be able to take them down in this 3v2 setup? Morrow's in a lot of trouble right now. Radapai gets locked out. Jamie all over him. He's full HP as well. Morrow's not going to be able to get away. Guess what? Alec has snares of his own, and Morrow's going to be stuck in place. Finally pulling the trigger with some damage, Nice Cyclone coming in from Ratapai, but Morrow, he is in so much trouble. No Ice Blocks, no Iron Bark for Ratapai. If Alec and Jamie can find the damage, they can easily take him down. I mean, Nixie needs to be careful. We've seen already that Temple Song's willing to drop Rest of the and they're doing a fantastic job without theirs in this game, but Jamie now caught up in the Mighty Bash. Here is Ray of Frost. He did it. He actually sees the Arcane Skulls from the Frost School. He's going to be dealing a lot of damage here, but Morrow is in trouble. Sunder comes out. Jamie is tunneling him down. The Iron Bark is the last line of defense, but Jamie's just going to heal himself and he's going to heal himself as high as he can behind the pillar and there's no ice blocks tempo storm from four to three from three to two but they're still winning games i don't know if he can top himself off though 54 percent dampening i mean enhancement shamans have a lot of off healing but i don't know if they have that much off healing this they is where ratapai is able to shine yeah he could go for the res but i think with the frost mage having blizzard and frozen yeah. orb it's gonna be kind of a nightmare <laughs> Got excited though yeah it looks like jamie just wants to go for drinks in this situation 
and they're trying to buy as much time as possible. But even a Frost Mage is going to be able to get out significant damage at this percentage of dampening. Every little point really, really matters. But Marl pushing in. I don't know if that's the right decision. He blinked right on top of Jamie. He has no blinks left. He's going to be stuck here all alone. Jamie looking to go all in. Trinket's out. Just going to be tanking this damage with the Astral Shift and now making a movie. They need to survive. I think Marl got way too aggressive. Full Polymorph on Ratapai. He Trinket's out. But once Iron Bark fades, it's going to be so scary. Yep. Now this year is used over onto the Frost Girl, which means the Sheep's coming out onto Alec. Jamie needs to be careful here. The Sentence button is up in 10 seconds. That Ascendance is a huge amount of burst damage for the Enhancement Shame. If they can lift to that, they might get the kill. Even before that, though, Radapai's Oom doesn't have his Trinket, doesn't have his Iron Bark. Mara is out of cooldowns as well, and he is being connected over onto. They have to Sheep up Jamie, which is such a disaster, but they're going for the res. They have the Ascendance. No, it's the Ascendance from Jamie. He's going to have range damage. Mara's not going to be able to blink away, and really, Radapai doesn't have anything to respond. There's the Ascendance. Too much burst can be coming in from Temple Storm. I don't see how Mara could ever survive this interrupt over on a Ratapai. Morrow getting lower and lower. And Temple Storm, they're battling for their BlizzCon lives. They win this matchup. It's going to look so good for them to stay in this tournament. That was unbelievable. Incredible. Uh, unreal. There's so much to talk about in this one. There really is. And, uh, you, you know, uh, <laughs> dropping. <laughs> I was just, I was just like, as soon as, as soon as Adrian said that, I was just staring. Do you have some of these top dogs that have already grabbed their spots at BlizzCon? Not an easy day for anyone. It's about to get a lot harder for making a movie. Tempo Storm's got dollar and sewers in the back pocket. Well, I think the only guy that's having an easy day today is Botar, because he's just watching his team, not even able to compete. Uh, and they're doing absolutely fine as a three-man roster. Uh, Nixie's doing phenomenal on the Restoration Druid, and I talked to Alec before this tournament. He's saying the main reason that they don't like hanging Nixie as healer is not because he's bad at healer, it's because they don't then also have him as a damage player. But we see they're getting a fantastic start here against making a movie once again, forcing huge defensives on Acro. Yeah, Maro, he used his ice form, had all his offensives up, and Alec just polymorphed him. And he sat that entire polymorph. Unfortunately, Ratapai didn't find the dispel, and making a movie just lost all their offensive pressure because of that. But a big swap over onto Nixie, he might go down right now actually still exceptionally low jamie trying to keep him alive nixie gonna be using the iron bark very late but ultimately that cooldown is so strong i don't really see him dying through it we've seen nixie be greedy with that before and that's something that making a movie can definitely capitalize on yeah for sure and i mean i want an enhancement shaman on my team because nixie <laughs> i have a lot of trouble there i want an, an enhancement shaman that isn't rich on my team because <laughs> this enhancement shaman is doing so much healing whenever nixie gets caught out he's just able to use global after global as nixie Nixie now caught up into the blind. He's choosing to set that. And I actually like this choice from Nixie because he knows that he is the target that making a movie has the best opportunities on. Yeah, Alex going to get caught into the kidney shot. Uses his temporal shield. That's going to fade. Now all this damage is going to be very effective. He blinks the death from above. Very nicely done by Alec. Nixie gets locked out. Has to play catch up on Jamie and Alec right now. But it looks like Alex wants to get aggressive. Uses the ice form. Putting out decent amounts of damage onto Acro. But Acro's just going to line aside. He kind of realizes that the kill has been lost. So playing it patiently just waiting for them to have their stuns. That's really when the rogue is going to excel. When he has these stuns, he can commit them on Alec, and that way he's also safe. He's slowing down the damage of the enemy team, and he can get aggressive. When that's not up, that's when he can go for restells, avoid damage by line of sighting, and I think it's smart. Yeah, and I think one of the other things you have to talk about is uh, also the assassination spec for Acrolos means that they're winning the mana game a little bit easier here. Radapai is actually doing a fantastic job on his mana this game. He's been sitting high, got caught up in a couple of polymorphs there, which is going to trade out the ice block, but I think early game, that's not a huge deal. Obviously, it's not great, but it's a decent trade for the Ascendance from Jamie there, which is the big offensive cooldown for the Enhancement Shaman. But if Acrolos can get a good connection, just tunnel down Alec, it's going to cost Nixie a lot of mana because of the he the wound poison, the healing reduction that the Assassination Rogue brings to the table. Yeah, Marl landing some polymorphs on Jamie. It looks like they want to make a swap onto Alec. They really want to slow it down, but Alec, we've seen before, he just plays defensively so well, immediately behind the pillar, blinking out a line of sight. There's the bash on Acro. Alec wants to get aggressive on him. If Jamie can connect, Acro could be in some trouble, but Iron Bark's going to be traded out by Ratapai. Now a kick over on a Nixie, and I ultimately think making a movie with these swaps over onto Alec, I don't think they're going to be able to land a kill with the way he's playing it. So if he can just keep playing defensive, Jamie can help him, off, help him out. I think uh, making a movie is going to have to 
uh, change their attention over on to Jamie and Nixie as the game progresses. I, I actually think making a movie have gone for an entirely dampening strategy here. They're playing Assassination, they're playing the mana game, and Radapai, I think he's also given up Cyclone for that overgrowth talent there, so it's it's very interesting to see that they they basically completely changed from the making a movie we know and love, who are this completely aggressive team, but at the same time, if they're going to play the strategy, they need to stop Nixie from drinking, because he just drank to full mana in the back line there, and that is one of the by consequences of playing a more defensive strategy is the enemy healer is always going to look for those drinks, man. Yeah, Acro gets caught into the bash once again. Alex soloing him down, forcing out the Cloak of Shadows, and that's the problem. When Acro pushes in, he gets caught into those bashes, and Alex just has so much damage potential when he has the Comet Storm, the Ice Nova, the Frozen Orb all saved up with that Ice Form. He can basically solo Acro down, and that's where he has to trade out those defenses. So Acro needs to be careful pushing into Alec and Nixie later on in the game. Meanwhile, you can see Jamie just putting out pressure on Amaro, bursting him down quite a bit on, as that enhancement shot. Amaro has to kite here. Nixie into the full polymorph, though. Alec could be in a little bit of trouble as they put some pressure onto him. Acro looking to connect, land the kidney shot. There's a full blind onto Nixie. Alec all alone but he responds with the Temporal Shield. It's still active. That should top him off. And Nixie was able to comfortably sit that entire blind sap cheap shot combo. Yeah, we actually saw Radapai getting out the Cyclone there, which means he's dropped the Focus Growth instead. He does still have that. So he has he has a few more things in the tool, but his mana is definitely not looking good here. He's down to 40. Of course, Nixie with that drink sitting high and healthy right now. As we see the Ice Form coming out of Alec, they're trying to get good damage here over onto Maru, who only has one of his Ice Blocks. The Cyclone coming out onto Radapai, trinketed. He wants to keep his second Ice Block for the Mage, as Dampling will be stacking momentarily here. And that's another cooldown force from Tempo Storm, who quite frankly haven't looked under any pressure for the majority oh! of Oh! Maro getting low, forced into the second ice block, so that's not going to be available for a long time. We are just now getting into dampening. Ascendance available for Jamie. If they can force out the Iron Bark, I want them to be, I want Temple Storm to be very, very patient with this Ascendance. If they can get Iron Bark in a nice setup, then they can use the Ascendance to easily close out the game. Maro's really not going to have anything left for quite some time. It looks like they want to get aggressive over onto Jamie. He's going to be fine. Nixie trades out the uh, Iron Bark. He's going to be able to top him off. And now Jamie's looking to get aggressive. Radapai looking for the drink. Is he going to be able to regen some mana here? Capstun might have denied it. We're not going to be sure until he swaps out. Managed to get a little bit of a drink, but there's a Bash Cyclone coming in from Nixie. Radapai line of sights it. Morrow's going to be completely fine because of that. Yeah, and that was the ascendance from Jamie. So that big wing condition we were talking about, Tempo Storm trying to set up, is denied there. Well played by making a movie. I think actually the Capstun stopped Nixie from getting the Bash Cyclone because of the DR, of course, on the stuns there. So that means that that big win condition is over. 6% dampening. Tempo Storm still need to be careful here, right? They're playing a fantastic game. It's been well calculated for them, but they can get caught out any time. This is still a rogue mage. Mara still has those big traits from the ice form. And if he can get one clean setup over onto Jamie or Nixie, this game could turn around in an instant. Yeah, Mara has his dice block coming up in around one minute. That's when making moves really going to feel safe once again. Radapai looking like he wants to get in position where you could potentially go for a drink. He's always dragging Alec and Jamie in the open. I think it's very smart. He can just play defensive like this. He forces the Enhancement Shaman off the pillar, and that's when he is susceptible to the mage damage, to the Assassination Rogue. When he has the pillar, he can easily just kite around it and avoid a lot of damage. Nixie getting actually sapped there by Acro. Nicely done. Acro uses his Trinket, uses his Vanish, lands a sap, kidney shot on Jamie. He preemptively uses the Astral Shift. He's going to be completely fine because of that, but that was nicely done by making a movie and Acro setting up for his team. That was a beautiful play, actually. We saw the first lead, the drink from Nixie, was sapped by Acrylos, so they got offensive. And then Moro novaed Alec and then sheeped Alec so that Radapai could sweep to full mana there. So that's a huge play, power play going into Dampling. That actually shifts the balance quite a lot here. They're going to swap some damage over onto Radapai, but honestly, the main goal there was to get his mana up. He's successfully done that. Now I want to see making a movie get aggressive. Jamie, low on health right now. Dampling starting to stack up. Nixie needs to be careful because his team's the one that's actually starting to fall behind a little bit because he's trying to hibernate Radapai, but he's not sleeping on the job. Gets caught up in the Cyclone as he is still in the crowd control here, but not too much doing for Tempo Storm. Making a movie need to find a way of getting this crowd control over onto Alec, though. Otherwise, they will lose this game. Yeah, Radapai trinkets out, though. Acro, no evasion, has to trade out the Cloak of Shadows. That was a lot of pressure coming in from Jamie and Alec onto him. Radapai now caught into the DR Polymorph. Are they going to be able to take Acro down? In the meantime, Jamie under fire, caught into the kidney shot, bashed onto Nixie. He trinkets out, throws out the Iron Bark immediately, gets spell locked. Or Radapai actually gets spell locked. He was looking for that Cyclone. Nicely done by Alec, defending his Resto Druid. And now Acro's in a lot of trouble using his last line of defense that evasion and making a movie. They don't really have any defensives left. Ascendant's coming up in 30 seconds. This is looking good for Temple Storm. We're at 20% dampening. Both Wrestle Druids have a little bit of mana to work with. Radapai 
quite ahead. Like you said, that power play can allow him to drink the full, basically reset his mana. Now they have at least that advantage moving forward. Yep, they get the full cyclone over onto Alec here. Once again, cross control, forcing the trinket out from Jamie and the astral shift without any major crowd control over onto Nixie. I wonder if they had to do that. It wasn't even the ice form coming out of Maro. They're really respecting the Vendetta from Acro Laws. Now this is a big opening for making a movie. No trinket on Nixie, no trinket on Jamie. Jamie will be the kill target for this assassination rogue mage druid composition, but they need to survive to it. We see Radapai sitting in the back line, putting out those hots. Aquilor's taking a bit of damage, but Jamie scared to commit now because he knows he's the kill target for making a movie. Yeah, Ascendant's going to be pop. He wants to get aggressive on Acro. Radapai in a very defensive position there. There's the bash. Acro trinkets out. Doesn't want to get caught into a stun and uh, forced to get bursted down. Jamie's going to be line of sighting once again. Radapai looking for a cyclone. Everyone manages to avoid it. You can see Acro, he's moving on top of uh, Nixie right here. I don't know if they want to make a swap over on him or they just want to land the kidney shot so Morrow can land the Ring of Frost. We'll have to see. But Acro's caught into the kidney shot, or sorry, into the cyclone, into a polymorph. Um, finally going to be able to connect to his target. Alec blinking in, but you can tell Temple Storm, they're just playing very defensive. They realize Jamie's in a lot of trouble. There's the full blind, but Jamie's stacking on top of Nixie. That's going to limit the amount of damage that Morrow can really do. Jamie doesn't want to run too far away because there's the Frozen Orb. Comet Storm Ice Nova could connect as well, allowing him to get bursted down, but he's trying to line of sight. Nixie finally out of crowd control, throws out the Iron Bark. That should be able to stabilize Jamie, but a nice interrupt coming in from Alec onto Ratapai is going to allow Temple Storm to get some sort of pressure onto Acro. Yeah. Yep, that was the kill attempt there for making a movie, and Jamie does survive it with the hybrid healing. Good grounding totem as well, denied the follow-up low cyclone from Radapai. So now they're very stable. Nixie has his trinket available. Jamie has his trinket available as well. So they can be the team to get aggressive. We see Maro has one ice block. He's the target in the eyes of Jamie, who's pushing in at this point. We see Acrylos just being controlled in the back line by Alec as the team starts to push in. And look at the mana once again. Nixie, during all that crowd control, able to regen a fair bit. Meanwhile, Radapai down to 20%. He does have that Innovate, which of course makes all his heals cost zero mana, but he's opting not to use it at this point as he wants to push in aggressively for his team. Yeah, next he throws out the Iron Bark, but I, I don't think making a movie really committed anything. Look, I Ice Form, I guess, was used by Morrow, but Vendetta still available for Acro. Jamie's going to be able to trade out his Astral Ship for that. Nixie caught into the crowd control. He can't drink it out or he's just susceptible to a full blind. Jamie now uses the Astral Shift on the Vendetta, wanted to have that trade. He got it, but still good pressure mounting for making a movie. Nixie managed to land a Cyclone onto Ratapai. Look for damage on tomorrow but he gets the iron bark has the ice block as well so making a movie they have a lot of defensives to rotate through in the meantime temple storm they have essentially nothing left they traded out everything there the only thing available is jamie's trinket so He's going to have to trink it out of that stun. He's going to have to play close to a pillar if he wants to be able to survive these next few setups. Yep, it's all on Jamie for the next one. He needs to get the trinket, grounding totem, or wind shear, whatever is needed to deny crowd control over onto his healer. But of course, there's a blind available for acro lols. So that's going to be the big win condition coming up here for making a movie. Meanwhile, of course, Radapai doesn't have his trinket either. So there's definitely, and this is getting very close to the end here, Ben. 40% dampening, healing reduction for both of these restorations, Drews. As Nixie once again sits down for a drink whilst his team's getting aggressive, but we've just waited for that big play. Here comes Acrolos. He's looking for the blind. Step blind. They're going for the kill. Yeah, Jamie could be in some trouble. Kidney shot on him, but Acro, he gets Cone of Cold. It's so far away. He can't reconnect. He manages to find the sap. Ratapai in position for a bash. Cyclone as well. Jamie's all alone. Acro looking to solo him. Morrow getting in position. Ray of Frost gets channeled out. And Jamie, I don't think you're living this one. Making a movie. Ties up the series 2-2. Another game. Five is going to be on the menu here. The winner of this going to move on. This is an elimination series and just want to kind of reiterate that but this is the final resting place for one of these teams lower bracket will be eliminated if you lose this one game five making a movie looking for those quick kills looking for those swaps over onto Nixie meanwhile Tempo Storm trying to kind of atrophy them into nothingness with the strategy we see the blind coming out immediately from Nixie or from Acro they're trying to get aggressive here yeah Jamie into the kidney shot a lot of burst pressure immediately Tempo Storm they do not want to throw this away Nixie gets a cheap shot on his trinket Jamie trying to keep himself alive with the trinket with the astral ship doing everything he can using the tombs line of sight to avoid the incoming damage from Morrow. i think that's very intelligent nixie finally out of crowd control but temple storm they traded out so much at the beginning of that game and afro still has the vendetta yeah i mean they traded out a lot and on top of that nixie didn't line up his trinket with the blind because he trinketed the sap so that means there's two openings here for making a movie there's the immediate one with the vendetta and then there's also the blind later on they might even wait for the all-in on the blind we'll have to see what they choose here jamie 
hiding away. Doesn't even have the Ascendance. He traded that out in the midst of all this. You can see he's playing very defensively right now. Like you say, Ven, not wanting to throw this game away. This is game five. And Tempo Storm, this three-man roster, have come so far. It would be such a shame to throw it away at this point. Well, Tempo Storm, they need this game if they want to make sure that their BlizzCon dreams are solidified. Whereas making a movie, they've already qualified. There's really not that much on the line for them. So <laughs> they can't throw this game away. Nixie now taking a little bit of damage. Nice triple fear coming in. Beautiful. Jamie, he is going to use the tremor, but a nice swap over onto Nixie. They forced out the bark skin. Varl's putting out a lot of damage right now. Has everything up with the Dark Archangel. Nixie barely surviving. Jamie, in the meantime, also taking quite a bit of damage, making a movie, just killing everybody. That was a beautiful pre tremor from Jamie, but it might not be enough as Nixie dropping low, able to get out some heals. We see the sheep over onto Jamie. Honestly, that might even help Tempo Storm to restabilize their health pools here. But that pre tremor, if it hadn't landed, would have been game. Nixie he wouldn't have got the off hills and he would have gone down there. Radapai has used about 40% of his mana so far. Of course, that's the win condition on the flip side for Tempo Storm, but still no trinket on Nixie. They're using the smoke bomb here. They have the blind in about five seconds here. The iron bar comes down. They're trying to stabilize. I would have loved to have seen making a movie wait maybe five seconds on that. Now Nixie's on the blind DR with that fear, so they're not going to have a kill window here. And making a movie starting to fall a little bit behind in this game. Now the opportunities are gone as Nixie will have his trinket back up. Yeah, Marl forced into his first item block of the game. Ratapai's not doing horrible on his mana, though. Still at around 65% in this matchup. Has the Dark Archangel coming up. Maro has the Ice Form as well. So there is a lot of damage opportunities for making a movie. Looking for a setup. Nixie trinkets out of the blind immediately to keep Jamie alive. As he's getting bursted down by the Ice Form, by the Dark Archangel. And Nixie's not messing around this time. He wants to make sure Jamie's stable so they can continue this pressure on Amaro. Maro getting interrupted. Alex putting out big burst. This could be the second Ice Block. Ratapai doesn't really have too much to keep him alive. It's caught into the crowd control. Alec really making plays for his team, CCing up everyone from making a movie, bursting down Morrow. Morrow, no ice blocks left, still under fire. Alec looking for the ebb and bolt, but I think Morrow should be able to survive for now. Yep, Nixie getting caught up into the kidney shot, though, has managed to get the preemptive bear form, and Morrow out of line of sight, meaning that Nixie should be able to get away from this one, but doesn't have bark skin, doesn't have the trinket, and we can see Vendetta coming up in about 13 seconds here, as is the ice form for Morrow. So that's the big win condition now for making a movie. They've kind of given up on Jamie here, although he doesn't have the astral shift he could potentially be a swap target as well but clearly Nixie would be a fantastic one we can see Nix uh, Acrylos just chasing after him at this point tunneling him down trying to put up those bleeds setting up for this next onslaught then yep Morrow he pops his Here offensives here's a big swap on a Nixie the Jamie trinkets out he's trying to keep him alive spamming out the heels Nixie barely surviving once again oh. the ice nova comes connect by Morrow Nixie getting out of line of sight iron bark's gonna be used at five percent HP and I think he's gonna live with that bash over on Acro no trinket available full cyclone coming in Nixie will top himself off making a movie they're making huge plays in this game in terms of offense but Ratapai is almost out of steam in terms of mana they need to get a kill and they need it fast yeah making a movie we're hoping to make a short film here but it's going a little bit longer than they anticipated as Nixie once again survives there with Jamie off healing we see a beautiful fear though coming down before the tremor but Nixie once again in that bear form means there's no swap opportunities for making a movie who once again they're fizzling out a little bit here then this trinkets back up for Nixie in about 10 seconds here. Jamie has the astral shift, and the longer this goes on, the more Tempo Storm will have that tempo in their favor. Yeah, there's no question about that. Tempo Storm is looking really good, but that's an interrupt over on a Nixie with a kidney shot on Jamie. No way! Can making a movie just take oh, it out oh, in one whoa. interrupt? This is what we're talking about for making a movie. They can just make plays happen out of nowhere. Ratapai's completely tapped on mana, and Tempo Storm, they cannot believe what just happened. And, and this is what they are so good at. Find feet versus the fake zebras were all tied up one and one who is going to find themselves on match point who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament keep in mind folks we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for azeroth